around 25 years old, I changed what I started eating. I'm a former college football player, um, you know, was the definition of a meathead um, and was always was always very fit, you know, because I was so active and an athlete. So my anytime I went to the doctor, it was simply, yeah, you may have some what I call, quote unquote, normal health issues like asthma, arthritis, uh, you know, skin problems, et cetera. But, you know, you're a very healthy weight, you're very fit, um, you know, keep doing what you're doing, take your inhaler before your football practice and call it a day, move on. Hey. And Pat, could we start by kind of breaking down your TEDx talk? Would you mind? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. That, uh, I suppose like the, the TEDx talk for me, you know, I, I had a, I had barfed out a book prior to, I had started a podcast, uh, cause I felt like I had to start talking about what I had learned over the, those few years of, of changing what I ate. Um, so the, yeah, the TEDx talk was really, um, you know, my, my coming out party, if you will, like people really didn't know anything about me prior to that. And then, um, that definitely kind of blew up my message for sure. And, um, yeah, I was a, I was a backup for that. Like there was a a Boston Um, one at Babson college here and I got a call like two weeks before the event, somebody had backed out, like they had travel issues or something. Um, and the woman organizing the event, uh, was aware of me. And they didn't have anybody speaking on health. Um, so I literally had two weeks and it was kind of a blessing because I really just, I didn't have a choice but to tell my story authentically. I didn't have mm-hmm. time to overthink it and come up with something that I thought would move people one way or the other. You know, I didn't have much time to plan. So I just told my story. And yeah, really the, 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 I guess, not long winded version is around 25 years old. I changed what I started eating. I'm a former college football player, um, you know, was the definition of a meathead, um, and was always, was always very fit, you know, because I was so active and an athlete. So my, anytime I went to the doctor, it was simply, yeah, you may have some, what I call quote unquote, normal health issues like asthma, arthritis, uh, you know, skin problems, et cetera. But, you know, you're a very healthy weight. You're very fit. Um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Take your inhaler before your football practice and call it a day, move on. And I always thought those things were just things I had to live with. Mm-hmm. And I was doing all the right things on the diet front. You know, if you asked anybody that was close to me during my football days, I was the health freak. You know, I had, I was doing my eggs in the morning, my chicken for lunch, my steak for dinner, you know, drinking green tea and eating chia seeds and like, you know, way before it was, it was cool to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, So I wasn't like an unhealthy person transitioning to a plant-based diet. I was a quote unquote healthy person. Um, And I just stumbled into, after my playing days, I stumbled into a plant-based diet through experimentation. I uh, was kind of sick of trying the same thing over and over, you know, everybody in my life from coaches to doctors, nutritionists, to people in the sports world told me high protein, right. And to everybody that meant high animal products. And that's what I followed to a T and yet I had these health problems. I found it difficult to stay in the shape I wanted to stay after my playing days and in my early to mid twenties. And, um, yeah, it's kind of the definition of insanity to try the same thing over and over, um, and still feel like you have to absolutely crush yourself in the gym to maintain, you know, your weight and how you, how you look. Um, so I just found a guy on social media. I wish I remembered who, uh, that was big into green smoothies and a green smoothie. I had already switched to, uh, plant-based milk because I just felt that was healthier many years prior. And, um, so yeah, I just changed out my eggs in the morning for this green smoothie. And I always say that that was my gateway drug. Um, you know, it was, when I think back, it was the first meal that I had had truly that was raw, whole plant foods and experiencing that, you know, over the next few hours in the morning, 
going out for my workout or uh, just working at my computer or whatever was just night and day. Um, and things started to work in my body better. My energy was incredible. Um, and I just went on this like smoothie binge for a number of weeks because it felt so good and it was so new to me. Um, and yeah, long story short, uh, about six months into really going hardcore into whole food plant-based, all of these health issues that I had had since a little kid started going away. The things that I, you know, had breathing machines before bed as a little kid for, um, the things I was given pills for arthritis wise that I had blamed on years of football and contact sports. And I thought I'd just have to live with these things and they were normal. Um, and all those things went away and it just shocked me that nobody in my life had ever given me that information because I was the type of person that I was going to do something with it. Um, and I think that's a whole nother path we could go down, um, with our healthcare system where, People don't believe people will make the healthy decision, even if they tell them. Um, and I was one of those per people. I was doing the things I thought were, were right. And I realized that all the people I trusted in my life had the wrong information. So it was a big shocking um, thing for me. I also come from a family where both my grandfathers died of either heart disease or cancer before I even knew them. My dad had open heart surgery in his mid 30s. Um, so when I started to realize that these things are preventable and even reversible, it just, I just felt called, I was so shocked and I felt called to do something about it. And yeah, the TEDx talk was just all about, you know, telling my journey and how I've kind of evolved and how that has not only changed my health, but changed how I interface with people in my life. Got it. And you know, I, I, you're making it seem like you're very humble about it in terms of, yeah, two weeks in advance and I had to create this talk and, and just tell my story. But I, when I listened to your TED talk, I saw a lot of strategy behind the, how you presented it and the order in which you told your story. It, I saw a lot of strategy in that. Did you, when you were kind of structuring how you were going to come at this. I mean, I'm talking about starting with the story of really connecting with your girlfriend. And it was like, when I'm listening to it, I'm like, okay, this is this empathetic side is coming out and your, your experience empathy for another human that you already love, you know, that's one step of compassion. And then you're talking about the health, your personal health challenges, and then getting into the systemic challenges of, of our healthcare system, and then going into the values and ethics. When you were creating a speech, what was what was going through your head in terms of how you wanted to deliver your message? Yeah, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. You know, I know the I know the value and the power of storytelling. And I wanted to tell a story that was moving to people because my, my, I feel my story was moving. It was certainly moving for me. Um, but also to educate from the point of view of my path. Like I didn't want to go up there and say, you know, plant-based diet is the only diet to shown ever to reverse end stage heart disease. And you should do this and you should eat this way and you should live that way. Like, I'm very aware that that doesn't work for most people. So, yeah, the whole talk very specifically was told from my point of view. Mm -hmm. It was, I learned this, I discovered this, um, this happened to me as a result. Um, so that was very thought out. And yeah, I just know storytelling is, is an important way to um, engage people. Um, so I definitely wanted to start out with that. And I think my original um, title for the talk was actually Food's Impact on Your Ability to Love. That was kind of like the really underlying message. It's like, how do the foods you put in your body impact your ability to connect with the people in your life? And I'm fortunate that the woman that uploaded the TEDx talk to the TEDx channel there um, chose a plant-based diet changed my life because <laughs> it's just a more searchable title mm -hmm. but the actual like in the pamphlet that day it was food's impact on your ability to love um but yeah it was very intentional and then the other thing was you know i wanted to 
I mean, I'm an emotional person to begin with. You know, I wear I wear my heart on my sleeve and I'm not afraid as a as a dude to show my emotions. And I wanted to not only do that, which is me, but I also wanted to, to the best of my ability, get across the fact that, you know, I am an ex-college football player um, and I am an athlete and, um, you know, I am, I am a man's man, you know, in terms of diet leading up to that point when I started to change what I ate. Um, and I wanted to be able to welcome in that person that I used to be you know, the 22 year old meathead that thinks vegans are scrawny and you can't live on plants. So that's why I mentioned football and, and mentioned my background and um, at least try to lean a little masculine on that front. Um, yeah. And then just weave in the science, right? It's like, you know, that, that's what ultimately convinced me I was on the right path. Like I felt what I felt and I knew in my heart it was right and I knew my body was right. But then when you really dive into nutrition science of the past hundred years and you see what it tells you, um, it's just so crystal clear to me. Um, and, and I had to, I had to drop my old beliefs because of what all that science is telling you. And you, you just can't argue with, um, I hope at least the, the things that I presented in the talk that are the most impactful to me, right. That, yep. you know, the, the top, X amount of diseases that kill us are all diet and lifestyle related. And um, if you can just understand that and then back into, okay, what should I be eating then to prevent these diseases from, you know, manifesting later in life? Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question there. But. Yeah, no, that's, that's fabulous. And, you know, it was just interesting hearing you talk about the the systems and the doctors and, and not mm -hmm. giving people the information and it's, it's it's kind of crazy how doctors, a lot of them are out there with that information and saying, yeah, I'm not going to recommend the things that I know are going to work because people aren't going to do it. They will act, they actually say that. And definitely it's so disempowering, right? Yeah, definitely. It's a, you know, the, again, in my experience, it's like, I always felt like I was a victim to the things I suffered from, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't ever told I could do something about it, you know, and I think in, and I get it right. Like we are in a country that, you know, almost 80% of people now are over overweight or obese with mul multiple chronic health issues. So, you know, doctors, they see the 80% every day, you know, me and you aren't in the hospital or seeing our doctor weekly. Right. So it's like the people they see every day are the sick ones. So and time after time, people don't change what they do. They don't even, you know, do their, their exercise like the do a good doctor right. might mention, right. right? So I can see where mm -hmm. doctors in the healthcare system do lose faith in their mm -hmm. patients to actually do what they say. Yeah. And I mean, I can, I can relate as a personal trainer for a decade, you know, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, people lying, lying about what they're eating. I'm like, I can't help you if you don't tell me. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. And I love how you, you threw in all the macho stuff. Um, and then at the end, it seemed to me, you got, you got a little choked up, uh, when you were, no doubt. yeah. It, what was going through your mind? Like being on stage, were you, did you have a lot of experience as a public speaker already? How, how were you feeling not, at that not moment? Not really. Like I had, I had again, because of the podcast and the book, just locally, you know, I would speak at schools, um, I'd speak at like the high school I went to, the college I went to, you know, once a year leading up to that point type thing. Um, and then I'd done a bunch of podcasts, but never like I'm I'm really good in again as an entrepreneur, I'm I'm used to pitching a room or or things like that. Um, and I'm I'm very comfortable talking off the cuff like we are now and you know, even giving a presentation. But the the TEDx is a different ballgame where it's filmed once, it's not edited, like they post what you say. And you have 16 minutes or 18 minutes or whatever it is. It's one mm -hmm. of those two and you you're done. So they'll cut you off if you hit the 18 minutes and you haven't, you know, finished your talk. And also like, if you screw up, you screw up and the millions of people that potentially see it, see you screw up and there's just <laughs> no way around it. So, so that was, that was very nerve wracking. Um, that, and I wasn't used to that, um, which, which made it like I had, I had a, I had a plan, but again, 
like the backup, the thing that kind of made me rest easy a little bit was that, hey, if I stumble here, like I am just telling my story. I know my story, you know, and I know all the information that I found, you know, I talk about it every week. I, you know, I, I love, I love that stuff. So I, I know it and I know my story. So that's what I fell back on. But yeah, I mean, the emotional part, right? I believe health is the greatest gift you can give yourself or, you know, help, help give somebody else. And again, I've just seen family members lose decades with people they love uh, because of diet and lifestyle decisions um, that they either knew or they had no idea that they were doing. But I think if you ask any individual what's important, right? It's family. It's spending time with family. If you boil it down, it's the connections in our life. And the fact that there is a way of eating and living that can extend that time on earth with those people you love is to me, to me, there's nothing more important. And I think everybody would agree with that when you really break down somebody's barrier and you, you get to the core of what matters to them. And that's an emotional thing to me, you know, and I'm, I am so grateful personally that I'm aware of it now and I have the information I have and I have the discipline to, um, you know, put it into action in my life. But it also saddens me that so many people unnecessarily suffer um, and, you know, miss out on years of life with their loved ones. And that's why I get emotional about it. Mm. It is. It's 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 huge if you think about it in those terms. And I'm curious when it comes to the animals and you chose to be pretty descriptive about what animals go through, you know, to to a large degree. Uh, at what point did you really connect to that? And how did you decide or was was there decision making involved in, in how detailed you wanted to be and how much emphasis you wanted to put on the life of a farmed animal? Yeah, for sure. It took me probably a year, you know, of of eating plant based and naturally you become more aware of things just, you know, by the people you start following or the information you start consuming on social media or wherever or just learning more about where your food comes from and asking questions that maybe you've never asked prior. And um, yeah, I was about a year in and I remember there's this place I walk um, in my hometown. It's about a two mile walk exactly from uh, the doorstep of where I grew up, my parents' house to uh, this beautiful farm um, up on this hill. It's a place called Turkey Hill in, in Hingham, Massachusetts, south of Boston. And up on this hill, it it looks back at the Boston skyline, you know, 15 miles across the ocean, you can see the Boston skyline. And there's um, all these cows up there, you know, free range cows, and they ultimately um, die and are used for food. Um, But it's a it's a beautiful spot and a beautiful farm. And you can walk up there and walk right up to the fence and, and pet a cow. And I don't know why. And, you know, I guess a little bit, I got into this in the talk, kind of how that compassion comes out in you. Um, Once the food you put in your body, put yourself in what I call like a place of ease and calm. And you're just, you're just better. You're just more empathetic and you're, you're, you've, you've blocked out the noise and the crap that maybe clouds your natural instinct and and judgment and ability to connect with others uh, with bad food and all that. And you're in a place now where, you know, call it high vibe or whatever you want to call it, where you can connect with other people better, as I detailed in the talk, but also with, with animals. And I just remember, you know, going up to the fence and patting this cow and he just wagged his tail just mm-hmm. like a dog would do, you know, and he loved it. And I was feeding him grass and he's licking his tongue and licking my hand and wagging his tail. And it just kind of hit me in that moment that you know, that was the burger I ate every night. That was the steak I ate every night. Um, And that was kind of my awakening, that one moment, and then led me to, you know, asking that question about all animals. 
And I think I was just in a place in my life to be able to receive that and connect with that. Um, but again, when it came to the talk, I know that is a turnoff and it's very hard. Like if you, if you, if somebody told me directly to eat plants for the compassionate piece of it, when I was 22 eating and living the way I was, I was not in a position to hear that and I would have been turned off by it. So I wanted to lead with health. I wanted to lead with kind of the, the selfish reasons to eat plant-based and kind of welcome people into the talk that way. Um, but then bring in the compassion piece. And again, it's just like, hey, this is where your food comes from. And the example I give, I think is powerful too, with the, the pig stuck in the fence there. And, um, you know, and I see that you, we see this all the time on YouTube and uh, videos that go viral. It's like the hunter literally with his rifle in his like yellow, I mean, orange hunting vest. He's literally out there to kill birds or kill rodents or whatever the hell he's trying to kill. And there's a hawk, you know, with his wing caught in a branch or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and the extent that human being goes to, to free that animal, even, even deer, I've seen hunters do it with a deer that's caught in something in, or, or a bear even, and people are literally risking their life to free this animal. And that to me, that that's the natural human reaction. Yeah. That is who we are as humans. Um, and we, for some reason, uh, turn a blind eye to that with, what we eat and even things like hunting and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's indirect conflict with who we are, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you, I, I just hands off to you for, for putting together such a powerful talk. It really, I mean, I get chills just thinking about it. So thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, how did that talk or, or just really your transition um, to a plant-based way of life change your career path. Can you talk about that? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I'm i uh, I'm somebody that I need to wake up with a, with a mission and a, in a, in a purpose and, and a big goal, or I'm, or I'm not a very happy person. <laughs> um, uh, I'm just, I'm just wired that way. You know, I, I lasted about two months at my first ever job when I was 22 out of college. And, you know, my only goal at that time was to get to 5 PM and get the hell out of there. Um, and that's just not me. I've always had clear goals, you know, before that it was, it happened to be sports. Um, and I like big far out goals and things that scare me. And, um, when I am passionate about something, I really like to go after it. And when I learned all this that we've been talking about, um, you know, I one wanted to talk about it and be a leader kind of in the Boston area and beyond. Um, but also I could see in Boston, that is a very traditional kind of city in many ways that it's not like a Miami or an LA uh, where these things have existed for many years. It's, it's pretty traditional and blue collar and, um, hard around the edges in many ways. And, um, I wanted to bring plant-based food to Boston in a way that is Boston. Um, and that is how I came up with, with the idea for, for plant pub and, um, kind of a, a, a bridge, a, 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 a bridge to people eating plant-based kind of a welcoming place. Like the, the places that existed in Boston before places that I love. Right. But they're kind of stereotypical vegan places, you know, bright colors mm -hmm. and food is on the walls and, and that yeah. sort of thing, which I love, but the average specifically like male, um, is turned off by. And again, the younger version of myself would have been turned off by it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also, I, I come from craft beer. I had started a craft brewery prior to plant pub. And what I loved about that environment for some reason, like tap rooms and breweries, it's the only place I've seen the 21 year old hip person trying the latest IPA right next to the 65 year old guy after his like construction shift 
right next to the family of five with their dog. Like it's a very welcoming environment. And I was like, wow, if you can recreate that environment, but do it in an entirely plant-based fashion and show people, number one, that, you know, plant-based food can be really good. Uh, but number two, that you don't have to sacrifice all the things you love to change what you eat and be more conscious. You can still go out with friends. You can still go out with your spouse. You can still meet somewhere to watch the Red Sox game or whatever it is um, and kind of welcome people in to, to, to the lifestyle. So that was kind of my big shift. Um, I was at, at the craft brewery when I learned all this plant-based uh, mm. stuff and my life changed. And I knew I had to do something about it in Boston that led me to plant pub. Um, and then, um, I've also kind of changed in the talk really motivated me actually in many ways. Um, one of, one of the, the biggest regrets of the talk for me, um, was that I wore like a loose long sleeve shirt. Because if you, if you knew me at that time, I was like two years post three years co post college football. Mm -hmm. Like I was an animal, you know, I was a hundred, <laughs> I was 180 pounds. I was benching 285 squatting 405, you know, like I was a real, I was a big dude. Um, I probably should have gone to Miami mm -hmm. for a few days, gotten a tan, <laughs> <laughs> came, came back, did the, did the talk uh -huh. like in a, in a tight short sleeve shirt, because <laughs> what, what, what has, what is beautiful about YouTube and, um, the, the stage of TEDx is that so many people see it, but it also comes with criticism. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, just the amount mm -hmm. of criticism I got for being a pale, you know, do that was emotional and it was just like ruthless on YouTube, but really ruthless. Yeah. If you get it, it you know, and it bought, it bothered me like the first year, but oh. it, it motivated me because I was like, I was so like upset because I was like, these people don't know who I am. Like, mm. like again, at that time, like I was in the gym six days a week, but it motivated me to say, okay, like, how can I use my athletic talent to show people what is possible and that it's not only possible on a plant base, like it's, it's an advantage and it's, it's like the ultimate athletic hack. And that, and that's led me to like, I was like, what's the hardest physical thing I can do. Um, and that's, that's led me to Ironmans and that's led me to triathlon and doing mm -hmm. things that the average person, and I guarantee you the people that comment on my video, um, can't possibly do. And, so it's, it's motivated me to be more of a example to people. Um, and that's also led me to, uh, plant athletic and that's very new. That's why actually why I was in Miami, uh, mm -hmm. this past week. So, um, but yeah, everything I do is now aligned with, you know, um, really encouraging people to make healthier decisions in their life and specifically to add more plants into their life because I know it can change people's lives. So good. This is, this is so interesting. So I have a few things on this. Number one, I know for me, a Ted talk is on my horizon some way, somewhere, and you have both inspired me and scared the shit out of me <laughs> in so many ways so far, just with thinking about the time limits and all of this and, and, and then, and then the criticism. So um, <laughs> thank you. And thank you. Um, but also another point, um, I'm sure you have IPAs, but do you have Belgian quadruples? You know, I have messed around with Belgian quads uh, <laughs> in the past. And we definitely, I did, I did like a little proof of concept south of Boston before I raised money for plant pub. It was like a three month pop-up. Um, and we had a we had a Belgian, uh, a quadruple we did, um, and a triple as well. Um, I'm trying to think of the brewery is an upstate New York brewery. Um, but is that your, uh, is that your, uh, choice of poison? If you, I, if you have a beer? I, I, it is, it is, it's awful because I'm, I've largely moved away from alcohol in the last year ever since. And I think a lot of people say this after ayahuasca, it, there's a lot of people that just don't, you don't crave alcohol so much anymore. So, mm. um, not that I was ever, well, um, that's, that's a lie. I, I drank, <laughs> I've, I've done my fair share of drinking and Belgian <laughs> quadruples is definitely my beer choice. And I've never understood why they're so unpopular 
relatively to uh, to like IPAs because I think they're so delicious. But the problem is they're like 11% alcohol. And I and I, I go and watch football and people are drinking like Mick Ultra. And here I am with my Belgian quad and they do not, you know, one's not a replacement <laughs> for the other. Yeah, it's, it's like you're you're drinking wine at that point. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, I, I am dying to come to Plant Pub. I would love to come check it out. Um, right up my alley. Like, like I said, like I've, I've shifted a lot with the spiritual path, but most of my life it's like football and sports and I'm hanging with the guys going to the pubs and never a vegan option, you know, in terms of the foods. And I'm like, why yeah. can't they just have, and we've, I've always wanted one in Miami, like grilled cheeses and, you know, just the things that a regular pub would have totally. and have it be vegan. So I, I love it. Um, and I do want to hear about plant athletic too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that, that actually, again, very recent, I've been, you know, five, four or five months ago, I first connected with them, um, two triathletes down in Miami that started it. Um, and yeah, I could just tell, um, as somebody that's worn their gear for many years, I could tell that they were, you know, not focusing on it as much. So the social media was kind of slowing down. Um, you know, some products not not in stock, that sort of thing. And um, I reached out and have since become very friendly um with them. And um, yeah, they've just gone to like such incredible lengths to make sure that they're sourcing, you know, I think 90, 90, 90 plus percent of the product is fully recycled. Um, it's all plant-based materials. They use specific ethical factories that they've done a lot of work of of vetting. Um, all compostable packaging that they ship their stuff in. Mm. Um, and it's just like incredible high end, high performance sportswear done the right way, in my opinion, that I've been a huge fan of and worn for many years. Um, and again, I've I've gravitated into that space um, over the past few years doing Ironmans and and running marathons and, and that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, and a lot of like my personal content and again, how I feel like I am leading by example is around endurance sports now. And I just thought it would be a great compliment and a great business to go into and really put a brand out on the market that is doing everything the right way in terms of no animals and, and ethically made and ethically sourced, um, but still being something that the best athletes in the world can wear. And um, yeah, the more I, I talked with them, the more um, it felt like a fit and, um, yeah, just recently within the past few weeks, uh, purchased the company and hopefully by spring, summer, we have like all kinds of new, uh, design stuff and, um, a, a slight rebrand and just really go hard into marketing and the content and, and see where we can take it. And I hope we can make wearing, you know, sustainable plant-based sports where the norm, um, in, in that space. So that's, that's my plan. So cool. Wow. Wow. Yes. You are nonstop, huh? I like to keep moving. Like I said, I, I need my big goals and things that excite me. <laughs> yeah. So let's use this last little bit here. I, I'd love to kind of hone in on your own health regimen. Like what does holistic health or holistic wellness mean to you at this point in your life? Yeah. Um, I think it means, you know, it means, it means feeling good. Number one, in the, in the way I, I guess kind of the big shift for me, um, over the past, you know, five, five to eight years is shifting from, I want to look a certain way to, I want to feel a certain way. I want to be able to perform a certain way. And I want to be around for many, many years. And that shift, um, and, and I always say like a beautiful side effect, if you do the right things with that in mind is the natural side effect is you're going to look really good, yeah. right? And it's going to be effortless if you check those boxes. And um, so that's very much been been my shift. And yeah, I'm, I'm less about like how big my chest and shoulders are <laughs> like I used to be mm -hmm. and more like, hey, there's a mountain over there. Like if my you know, uh, cousin says, Hey, you want to climb that tomorrow? Like I'm able to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and hopefully in the future in, 
you know, my forties when my, or my fifties, when hopefully my teenage kids want to run their first marathon, I'm right there with them. And that, those are the things that, that motivate me now, uh, from a health standpoint. And I guess kind of the main things I do, um, that I'm big on, obviously one is whole plant foods as much as possible. Um, always vegan, but you know, sometimes I, I certainly have the indulgences like plant pub and, and other foods, um, in the occasional great IPA. Um, but I know my body and I know when I know what I can handle with that stuff, you know, that it's a, it's a once in a while thing. You know, I know I can't have more than two beers on a, on a Saturday. Like it just, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> and I'm always trained, you know, Sunday morning, I'm up at 5.00 AM and I'm, I'm running or biking anyway. So it's like that holds me accountable and I want to be able to perform the next day as well. Um, so whole plant foods, number one, um, sleep number two, um, I've been with my, uh, girlfriend now over 10 years and we have never slept in the same beds. Uh, <laughs> <This is laughs> and <awesome>. that's, <laughs> that's been, that's been, uh, you know, it took her a little while to get on board with it, but that's how serious I take my sleep. Wow. Um, you know, we spend our time together and if we want to, you know, be intimate or whatever, it's like, okay, we just, you know, come to my room. Um, and what will, you know, spend a few hours, but when it comes time to sleep, like, you know, my room's cold. I have my own blankets. I'm not getting elbowed. Like I'm sleeping through the night and I'm, I'm, I'm just a huge believer in sleep. And, um, I guess something that's happened with all of this is just like questioning the norms. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is one of the norms that I mm -hmm. think many people, they just, over the years get used to with their spouse or partner, get used to having shitty night sleeps. And, um, I just think that's, doesn't make any sense. I always am with like friends that are married or whatever, and you'll get into a conversation where somebody's complaining about the other partner when they were sleeping. And I'm like, just sleep separately. Like, <laughs> what are you trying to prove to people? Oh my God. I love this. I like absolutely <laughs> love this. I think this is the healthiest thing people can do for not only themselves, but probably for their relationship as well. You yeah, know? totally. Totally. Like we wake up, right? Like, like, you know, like nobody's mad at each other when we wake right. up, you know, there isn't like that. Oh, you were snoring last night and I slept like shit. Like there's none of that. So like right off the bat, like in the relationship, it's, it's better, but also you're just well-rested and mm -hmm. you're going to be a better you when you're well-rested. And, um, so that's another thing. Um, I'm big on breath work as well. Um, I can't say I do it every day anymore. There was certainly a, a period of time where I was learning it and I was every day and was learning all kinds of different techniques. Mm -hmm. But for me, I started with, I found Wim Hof, who I'm mm -hmm. sure many people are familiar with. Um, and, you know, use that, that 30 breath and then the, the breath hold and his technique and, um, again, one of those things that I was blown away by, like, wow, I've had access to this. This is free. Like, I don't need a gym membership. Like I can just lay down on the floor and do this. Um, and that was really big for me. So I'm big on breath work. And did you time, um, did you time your breath hold? Um, I will tell you, know, I, I probably shouldn't, but occasionally like, know, I'll do it. I'll do it in the car. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, so, no. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, like if if on a perfect day I'm laying down like in my yeah. bedroom on the floor and my eyes are closed and I'm not timing anything. Yeah. I'm like trying to zone out. Right. Yes. Uh, but I'll do it in the car, like on if I'm going into plant pub or commuting or whatever. Um and I don't recommend <laughs> Would not recommend that. that. No, let's not recommend that, but but this is interesting. Yeah. I do I don't recommend it, but <laughs> I've been doing it so many years. I know the feeling if I'm getting yeah. lightheaded or whatever. Um, and I will time myself. Um, on those breath holds because I'm awake, obviously driving. <laughs> right. And I didn't glance at my watch. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll get close to two minutes, um, but I certainly haven't gone unless I do multiple, multiple rounds. Right, right, right. Yeah. But I'm usually doing two to three rounds. Yeah. Um, and I don't get much past that. Uh, but that's been a game changer for me. I swear by that. Um, and then, yeah. And then just movement. Um, Again, I've gravitated over the over the past years to running, cycling, swimming, um, more body weight type stuff when I am in the gym. Um, and yeah, I just uh 
I also, I guess, generally speaking, I don't, uh, I mean, I don't beat myself up. Um, I know that consistency over long periods of time is the secret sauce. And I don't, if I took yesterday off or ate poorly yesterday, I'm not trying to make up for it or punish myself for it. Like I'm very, I'm very forgiving with myself. Uh, but I, I also don't lie to myself at the same time. Um, I'm honest with myself. Um, but yeah, those are, those are some of the things kind of non-negotiable type everyday things for me. If you had to kind of decide one challenge for our listeners, for our 99 Thrive members to implement daily, a doable new habit for them to implement daily. If you had to choose one for the next, let's say one month or even just one week, just to, to start, what, what do you think you would you would choose for them if you got to prescribe it? I would prescribe breath. I think, it, again, it's the easiest. You don't need running shoes. You don't like, you don't need anything. Um, you know, lay down 30 breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, just let it go. You know, don't force it out. 30 breaths, stop, hold as long as you can. Big breath in through the nose, hold at the top for as long as feels comfortable, let it go. Two rounds of that takes you literally less than five minutes. That can just completely change how you feel every single day. It's free um, and it's probably the most, in my opinion, the most powerful tool we have at our disposal. Again, that you don't have to pay for. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Pat, it's, where can people find you uh, and, and your projects? And yeah, where, where should people go? Um, eatgreenmakering.com is kind of like my personal website that I have the podcast and, and things on. Uh, plantpub.com if you're in uh, the Boston area and want to check out that. Uh, plantathletic.com uh, if you're in the market for some cycling or running gear. Uh, or triathlon gear. Um, yeah, at Eat Green, Make Green on all social media. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Amazing. We will, of course, put all of that in the show notes. Uh, any final words, anything else that we've missed that you'd like to to share? Um, I don't think so. I would just leave people with... Um, I just leave them with that they are capable of whatever they want to set out to achieve and to go easy on yourself, whatever that thing is. And, and don't, don't give yourself 30 days to achieve it. Give yourself 30 years to achieve it and take a longer lens on the way you look at your health or your goals and just show up as many days as possible and just don't give up on that goal and, and just keep going. And, and you are, you're truly capable of anything, whether that's reversing health issues or um, starting a business or accomplishing any goal. Um, just go, go, stay committed to it, show up each day and, and, and stick with it for many, many years and you'll get there. Yeah, I love I love your message of consistency. It's not about beating yourself up, but it's about keeping keeping going on your path and doing it day after day the best you can. So, Pat, you're awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Ella, you're awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you for hosting this and connecting all the awesome people you do. Uh, you're a huge inspiration as as well. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Hey.